back to this series of tutorials on Jira. We are in tutorial number 8. In tutorial number 8, we will see all the settings that we did so far in action. Tutorial 8 is basically split into three sections. Planning, execution and closure. I intend to cover planning in one tutorial and execution and closure in the other. Finally, we'll end the series with a tutorial on reports and Jira query language. In the planning, in the sprint planning tutorial, we'll create the product backlog, create sprints, break the stories into subtasks, and estimate their effort and enable the time tracking. We'll talk a little bit of capacity planning and how to validate the team's planned utilization using Jira query language and Microsoft Excel pivot capabilities. Finally, we'll do some basic checks and start the sprint. I will start sprints for two teams, namely Team Alpha and Team Beta. That's what we intend to do in the planning. In sprint execution, we will learn about moving the tasks across the scrum board on a daily basis, logging the work and monitoring the burn down charts and moving the stories to done. Finally, in the sprint closure, we will learn how to handle the stories which were incomplete We'll see, a, we'll see the sprint end reports and create summary pages in Confluence and link them to the sprint end report. Let's get started with tutorial number 8, sprint planning. Click on create issue. I've been telling about this button create issue but I never explained what a story look like looks like and what are all the details that get into the story. Click on create issue and let's create a standard issue type. A standard issue type is a story is a standard issue type. In our case the standard issue types that I have configured are story, task, epic, bug, spike and an impediment. Here you choose the story. Here you give the summary of the story, basically a brief title. Choose the appropriate component and give a description of the story. I'm not getting into the further details of a story. Here I've created some stories. User story 1, 2. User story 4. Of course, they are not in the actual story format. The intent of this tutorial is not to tell about what a user story is, how to write, and so on and so forth. The intent is all about to learn about Jira. I have created user stories, story 1 to story 4. There are multiple ways in which we can create subtasks. So let us, uh, subtask is a subtask issue type. In Jira terms, subtask is the technical work that needs to be done to accomplish the story. There are multiple ways of creating subtask. This is one of the ways. Click on these three dots and create subtask as shown. The moment you click three dots, this pop down will appear and you can click create subtask. The concept is a story is broken down to tasks and tasks are technical in nature such as development, testing, impact analysis. Basically the actual work that needs to be done to achieve the story. Story is the what, tasks are the how. As you can see the Tasks that we add, the subtask that we added in tutorial 3, development and testing. If 
you remember in tutorial 3 we added these two sub task issue types development and testing they are appearing here you can create sub tasks by choosing either it is development or testing and click click on create briefly side tracking a bit let me briefly talk about capacity planning because we would require this concept down the line before we move further let me talk about capacity planning this is the capacity planning math per person for a 10 member team the number of engineering hours per day per person is 6 number of days in a sprint is say 10 that is a 2 week sprint available capacity per person is 10 into 6 is 60 hours for a 10, 10 member team the team capacity is 10 into 60 is 600 pretty simple at the end of the sprint planning meeting using jira query language we will be able to see how many hours each one of us have planned ourselves for this primarily brings in the transparency in the team and the collaboration that we keep talking about in the agile world now returning back to the task creation however in the screen i find that there is no provision to estimate how many hours this particular subtask will take so if you scroll down here you don't see the R section this is because time tracking is not yet enabled I will show how to resolve it using the fields pertaining to time tracking we will be able to plan the time in terms of hours or minutes for a particular piece of technical work by estimating each of the tasks and the summation of those at the end of the sprint planning meeting enables us to evaluate as to how many hours each one of us has planned himself or herself for. Now to enable time tracking what you got to do is click on configure fields. If you remember we use this same route to search for story points in one of our previous tutorials we'll use the same route click where is my field the moment you click where is my field you get this pop up wherein you can start typing time the moment you start typing time there's an auto population of this use choose time tracking here you will get the tips to solve this problem the same thing we saw when we configured story points we will configure the issue screen that we are using for this project to solve this problem we will configure the default issue screen which we are using for this project on clicking the configuration screen you arrive at this configure screen time you click you start typing time and the drop down appears as time tracking you choose that so you add time tracking to this particular list now we see there are two fields which are appearing original estimate and remaining estimate the estimate to accomplish this task is to be given in the original estimate by giving just 4 as a numerical over here it will default to 4 hours because we have configured the default to to hours 
in tutorial 7 time tracking if you remember in tutorial 7 of the time tracking we changed the default unit of measurement from minute to hour so the moment we give 4 it will take us 4 hours of course if you give it as 4 m it will take us 4 minutes but if you just give 4 or 4 h it will take it as 4 hours As you can see, I have created some tasks for this particular story, user story 1. The moment I choose this user story 1, the sidebar shows the details of that story. If you scroll down, you will see the subtasks as well. Now, let us create a sprint by clicking create sprint. Likewise, what you got to do is you have to task out, if I can use the word task out, all the stories and create subtasks for it. The tasks could be development, impact analysis, design, testing, whatsoever. Now let us see how to create a sprint. Click on create sprint. If you navigate back to the backlog, you are presented here to click on create sprint. Click on create sprint. When we create a sprint for the name, by default it takes the next in the sequence of the previous one. When we click on create sprint, the name by default it takes the next in the sequence. The previous one was team Charlie sprint one. So the next one took it as, it, went, it automatically took it as team Charlie sprint two. However, we can edit the name of the sprint as shown. By clicking on these three dots, you can edit the name of the sprint. I have created a sprint by name Team Alpha Sprint 1. And I have dragged and dropped the stories. Four stories and one spike and one production bug from the product backlog into the sprint backlog. This is a sprint backlog. Observe the color code. It is red for a story, blue for a spike and green for a production bug. This is what we did configure in tutorial number two which is about the board settings briefly going back to the topic of creating subtasks and estimating in hours in this case i have estimated the subtask of only one of user story one some development work for four hours and some testing work for five hours totaling to nine hours so in this example i have tasked out only the user story 1 with some development work and some testing work amounting to 9 hours in total. The same is reflected here as 9 hours. If you can see, the same is reflected here as the same is reflected here as 9 hours. 9 hours of how to accomplish the sprint goal of team alpha sprint 1. The commitment is of 13 story points. These are the story points 5 plus 3 plus 2 plus 3. These are the 13 story points that the team has committed and it requests 
9 hours of technical work to accomplish this 13 story points. Additionally, as you can see, story points are only for user stories, but there are these are the four user stories and it has got story points. The spike in the production bug does not have story points given to it. I am not getting into the details of what a story point is, how to size a story, planning poker and things like that. That is not in the scope of this tutorial series. In case you attempt to start the sprint at this point of time by clicking the start button, you will get an alert like this, which is a warning to us that the backlog items, let me zoom. When you try to start a sprint, you get a warning. It says this, it says that the issue number 40, 39, 27, and 26. And one other have not been tasked out. That is what it means. Do, and it says, do you still want to start the sprint? Ideally, we should not start the sprint. I repeat, we should not start the sprint at this point of time. The reason being, if we start the sprint now, the ideal burn down line in the sprint burn down chart will not appear or rather will start only from just 9 hours because that is what we have planned for as of now. We have not tasked out the other stories. That is a warning that is appearing over here. So if you start the sprint now, the burn down chart, the ideal burn down chart, ideal line in the burn down chart will start only from 9 hours which is what we have as of now. Hence click cancel button. There is a specific reason why I have tasked out only user story 1 with 9 hours. I wanted to show this alert so that we know what this alert means. I get a lot of queries on this. People ask me even after I start my sprint, my ideal burn down chart is not appearing fine and things like that. This is the reason. They neglect this alert and click on start button. Let us not do that. Let us click cancel and let us task out all the other stories. Now, as I explained how to task out user story 1, I have tasked out user story 2, 3, 4 and couple of tasks for the spike and bug and things like that. Now, the remaining hours has increased to 54. What we are telling is, to accomplish the sprint goal, you need 54 hours of work that needs to be done which will give me the sprint goal. Of course, the commitment is of 13 story points. For that, I need to expend 54 hours of work. Now, the ideal burn down chart, the burn down, the ideal line on the burn down chart will start from 54. Now, go back to the screen. As shown in tutorial 6, multiple teams using components. If you remember, tutorial 6 was all about using multiple teams and about the feature components of Jira. We, in that, we have enabled parallel sprint execution. Hence, we can start multiple sprints. We can start multiple sprints. You see this one and this one and this one. 
Just because we enable that checkbox in tutorial number six, we have the ability to start multiple sprints. Else, we would have seen only one start sprint button. Now, let us assume that we are towards the end of the two or three hour long sprint planning session for a two week sprint, wherein the team members have tasked out all the stories, spike and bugs and estimated the individual tasks in hours. Let us consider that as a scenario. Now, as a team member or as a scrum master or even as a product owner, we would want to know how much we have planned ourselves for and if the other team members in the team have a different viewpoint on the time it will take to achieve a particular technical work. This is the transparency that we talk in the Agile world. Everyone should know what the other person is doing and everyone should have a viewpoint into the work that is being done by the other person. Everyone knows what the other, others, others are doing and there is no hiding place. We can't fudge the efforts. Since Jira does not give an out of the box solution for this, we will have to use Jira query language. To get to that, click on issues. Now what we are doing is, we are validating our estimation against our capacity. That's what we are doing now. To achieve that, we will have to use Jira Quindling language. So click on issues. Click on all issues. Click advanced search. Click advanced search. Click advanced. Now, here in the text box, type the query in the text field. You will find that the tool auto renders as and when you start typing. Project is equal to DP and sprint is equal to the moment you put a double quote and start typing the team name, it auto renders. The moment I start typing team, it auto renders a list as shown. This is the Jira query language. I'm not getting into the details of the Jira query language, though over here. Once you choose a particular sprint and click on search, you will have this query results populated and this is the query results. Click on the list view. This is the query result for team alpha. Click on the list view. Now, Configure the required columns by clicking columns. There's a button here as columns. By clicking on columns, you can configure the various columns that we want over here. The moment you start typing estimated, estimate, it auto renders. It gives all these. Choose all of these estimate columns which we will use to validate against the individual capacity. Choose the time spent columns as well. We'll need them during the sprint execution and tracking. Choose the ones with respect to the time spent and the sigma time spent. On executing this query, this is how the screen will look now. 
there are lot many details that you lot there are lot many things that you can do in this view which are the tasks that are picked up by which of the users in G, in the agile language we say that the tasks are voluntarily picked up by the users so we get to know how many what is the original estimate of a particular task what are the remaining tasks are there any tasks still left unestimated there quite a few information that appears on the screen you might want to experiment with the screen all of this information will come handy during the sprint planning meeting now export this as a csv file as a export download button sort of a download button over here export as a csv file these are the time related data that we are interested in but it is in seconds converted to hours as shown column number m n to s is in terms of hours now create a pivot table using the sum option of the pivot table i am not showing the details of how to do a pivot and things like that it's expected that we would know it otherwise you can search on how to do a pivot using the sum option of the pivot you can see the user admin has 39 hours planned for himself while mahendra has planned himself for 15 hours now referring back to the capacity planning of the individuals that we spoke about a while ago we can see how much each one of the individuals have planned themselves out additionally we will see the entire team has planned for 54 hours while the team capacity will be as per the math which we explained earlier in the actual scenario it would be 10 members into 6 hours per day is equal into 10 days is 600 hours of capacity with each one of them having 60 engineering hours per day oh, per head sorry 6 engineering hours per day amounting to 60 engineering hours for the sprint for a two week sprint using this pivot we can clearly see where each one of them each one of the team members stand and the best part is the team themselves can see it for themselves see it for themselves this is what brings about the self managed teams and the collaboration amongst the team members that we keep talking about they can hold each other accountable that is how you can use the jira carrying language export it and use excel and bring about that accountability amongst the team members now that we are done with all our planning are at a stage to start the sprint i'm just showing here that the active sprint section is empty as as of now because i have not activated any sprint click on active sprints you find that it is empty now click on start sprint which brings up this pop up now if you see the alert or the warning that we got a few slides ago is not appearing because we have tossed out all the stories so we are good to go fill up the start date end date you can write a sprint goal as well and click on start i have started two sprints i have started team alpha sprint 1 and team beta sprint 1 this how the back now clicking on the backlog it will look well i think i'm running out of my battery let me just quickly 
get my sorry about that well we are back into the business i was studying about I having started two sprints, one alpha and the other for team beta. Both are being sprint one. If you navigate to the sprint active sprint section. click on active sprints it will show the items of both the sprints all you got to do is there's a drop down over here the moment you filter for team alpha sprint 1 you'll show it will show the items of only team alpha sprint 1 and likewise if you show, if you choose team beta sprint 1 it will show the items of team beta sprint one now let's choose team alpha sprint one if you use this drop down against a particular story it expands and it will show the tasks that are there against this particular story to see the burn down report on day 1 of the sprint let's click on reports click on the burn down chart click on burn down this is how the burn down chart will look as soon as we start the sprint the gray line is the ideal graph as you can see it is 54 hours this is what i was telling the ideal line in the burn down will show 54 hours i am not getting into the details of how to interpret the effort burn down and things like that it is out of scope of this tutorial by selecting the appropriate team in the burn down we will see the respective burn down chart if you choose team beta sprint 1 it will show the burn down for team beta sprint 1 additionally if you see there's a drop down over here as story points this is the story point burn down in the previous one we saw the effort burn down this is the effort burn down if you change this drop down you'll see the story points burn down as well well this brings us to the end of the planning stage of uh, sprint meet you in the next tutorial wherein we'll see the sprint execution and closure thanks for joining